The year is 2027. The Pac-12 is finally making a resurgence. Eight teams were vultured from conferences around the league, like Boise State, Stanford, and Arizona State, to revive the conference and, well, at least be the Pac-10 for now. But more importantly, one team from the Big Sky got the call to make their big league debut. It's the Eastern Washington Eagles. Three and seven in 2023, Sir Sponge came in to turn this team around in 2024 and has been coaching for three years now. In just those three short years, by 2026, Sir Sponge had his team winning the Big Sky Conference. Wanting to keep the tradition of winning alive, guys like Des McHenry Jr. and Danny Hawk have a tall task ahead of them. Des McHenry Jr. are left outside linebacker, defensive captain, and sophomore young gun Danny Hawk, offensive captain. Ready to soar to the next level, the Eagles bring the heat with their red turf in this new look Pac-12. In year one starts off with a date against the Pandas, which should be a tough enough challenge. Before we get to the infamous Pandas who will give us a run for our money, we need to give these prospects a run for their money. Sir Sponge needs to open up the wallet or start collecting donations because we need to stack this NIL fund. How else can we afford to bring in these three and four star players? Brad McClellan and Bruce North are the only two five stars that are letting us scout them out. I know I showcased Dez and Danny, the two promising players on this team, but trust me, this team is weak at a lot of skill positions. Hardly any linebackers and definitely short at safety. Defense is pressing need number one, but you can tell it quickly falls into the lower 70s right away. Now, I am going to come out and say it. I hope Team Builder allows us to have more flexibility in the near future because I need to give a huge shout out to Montana Football for putting this Eastern Washington team together in Team Builder, which you can go download their team as well. But the overall was already set at 87 and Ezekiel Lomax is ready to help us out. Our first ever commit Insta commit. What I'm trying to say is I scout out Marco Gooch here. It can be a little difficult to customize the roster with the presets we're given. But one of the best parts about Dynasty is exactly what we're doing right now, scouting out all of these prospects, which will come in and help turn this Eastern Washington program into a powerhouse. Look what we found, Dion Peel. Good memories of the Peel last name. Peely, anyone from the Savannah Bananas rebuild? Not surprising here, but Eastern Washington is one of the worst schools to go to for pro potential. Sir Sponge with his solid tenure in the FCS gets a generous C- minus for the FBS here. Only got 400 hours to work with, but I know for a fact I need game changers like Devontae Sneed, four-star gem defensive tackle. Go ahead and add Emmett Coat to that list as well. Wisconsin's the only one else to give Frank Sash a scholarship, but I'm confused how we're already number one. In year one of the rebuild, I'm not even going to worry about scouting him out. Let's just go ahead and give him some points. Because realistically, when it comes to four stars, they should be able to make an impact to the roster right away. I take back what I said. I'm going to scout out Frank Sash, and that is exactly why. He's a gem, so I might as well send him the house. I actually high key forgot we put a five star on our board, so definitely got to get him some points. It's game week against the FCS Pandas, and it's the moment you all have been waiting for. Let's go check out that red turf and get a good litmus test on how we hang with an FCS team. Again, Montana football put really good work into this team builder and brought the teams to life. So we got the blackouts as well as the home and away. There it is. First peek at the red turf. Man, that looks good. I'm not going to lie. I'm a fan of the Boise blue and I kind of like this red. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but honestly, I can only imagine what this red turf looks like in real life. I've been to the Boise State Blue, went to grad school for a couple of years there, so I'm sure it's pretty trippy to see as we take a safety on the first drive. The pandas are seriously not messing around, are they? Marching out to the field is Devon Wingate, and he's looking to win. All it takes is for the Eagles to get hot, and we're right back into the red zone. As Mr. Danny Hawk and the Eagles are aggressive, going for it on fourth down, we have a wide open tight end just delivered it out to Ford walk it in big boy on the defensive side of ball here we got Des McHenry our defensive captain bringing in the pressure couldn't come fast enough as he had enough time just enough to get it off and then score on the subsequent play. It's expected for an FCS team making the ascent to the FBS to be one of the worst squads in the nation. We'll look to shock the nation this year, just like we're looking to shock the pandas on this fourth down conversion. That's right, we're an aggressive team with not much to lose. Hawk, 95 speed, just takes it in himself. Big touchdown. Yes, sir, Danny. Eastern Washington out of the big sky would play the pandas on occasion. They weren't part of the big sky, but it's good to see a familiar foe. Not the expert, my apologies, because the Eastern Washington Eagles are just putting it on the pandas. Boise State has a reputation of defending the blue turf and winning a lot on that field. I wonder if we can turn Eastern Washington into a similar dominant group of five powerhouse. I guess Pac-12 was a power conference. 
So it's sort of in between now. Already up by 19 points. We have two minutes to go ahead and get some more. Third and 10, looking for someone to spring free. It's the tight end number 91 or 81, my bad. Danny Hawk has been red hot and we're gonna keep testing the pans out here with a air raid. Minute to go midfield. We have a wide open tight end who should be able to secure this one in. And on that snag, we are right here in the red zone. Ford is gonna catch and run. Hawk stepping up to the right. He's been to the right before and can scramble like no other it's dangerous not to put a spy on hawk so i don't know what the pandas were thinking that's another touchdown that's five in the first half second half football we got third and seven right here corner strike touchdown it is all over not satisfied until we have national player accolades under our belt hawk wants more ask and you shall receive there it is knock knock Who's there? It's the Eastern Washington Eagles marching. And it's deja vu all over again. It cannot be stopped. Satisfying finish to the first game in Eastern Washington FBS history. 56 to 23. They're showing right now that they deserve to be here. Player of the game, without a doubt, Danny Hawk. And geesh, we're starting off this video with fireworks. National player of the week in the first game. Absolutely love to see a four-star gem in week two here have all their interests unlock. And better yet, it's B plus, A plus, A plus. Giving him this hard pitch is gonna be like an insta win. What a tale of two teams. The next week we get shut out by the Beavers 30 to zero. Danny Hawk was sacked five times and only mustered up 199 yards. It's really important we schedule visits for our top prospects because we don't wanna lose them in time races like Devonte Sneed, Texas A&M right on the trail. Unless you're Emmett Cote, which we're pretty much guaranteed to snag this one heck of a linebacker with 88 acceleration, 87 speed, good tackle, looks like a good plug and play. What did I say? That signee is huge. Get ready for the sash attack because Frank has arrived. It's not Dennis Rodman, it's Dennis Redman. Red's in the name, he's ready to play on the red turf. Eureka, Eastern Washington is hitting gold so early in the recruiting battles, it almost feels unrealistic. Trust me, as a coach, I'm eating this up. Four-star gem Frank Sash, three-star Dennis Redman, and four-star gem Devonte Sneed. Plus, we're moving the needle on three other four-stars right now. I get the Eagles have come off to a strong three and two start with wins over Washington State, New Mexico State, and then lost big to Fresno State. But shoot, you gotta give it up to a great coaching staff that can convince people to come play. Let's replenish our prospect board with the hours we now have before we jump into our next game. Out of Manville, Texas, the call to be an Eagle out of East Washington is just too strong. He had to come up. I'm curious as you all are going through your dynasty rebuilds, what little tips and tricks have you noticed? Because this one, I just realized, contact friends and family and send the house give the same amount of influence. So why would I spend 25 extra points? Because look in the case of Gerald Anthrop here, five influence points for sending the house, whereas you contact friends and family, it's only three. Just an interesting observation, and you know what else is interesting? Seeing Boise State in the Pac-12. At 85 overall, it's clear to see that they are thriving, and it's a night game in Boise. You got a taste of the red turf, now here's a taste of the blue turf, the iconic Smurf turf that started it all. In fact, schools like Eastern Washington need to get clearance from schools like Boise State to use the patent colored turf technology, which is wild to me, just like Sir Sponge and Danny Hawk, three and five, the wheels have kind of fallen off since our last check-in. The eyes shouldn't need to adjust as much on the blue turf because we have our own turf where our players have adjusted already to playing on in Amundsen. Good first play to start this game. The Boise State Broncos are six and two. That is bull eligible. I expect them to keep playing tough so they can get themselves all the way into the Pac-12 championship game. And that was a tough play on defense there good protection and we got a fourth and three i don't think we got it and nope we did not so it's the senior season 95 overall malachi nelson's turn quickly showing us what that blue turf mentality is like until the running back just sold peanut punch our ball defense came through for us when our back was against the wall so now it's time to return the favor on offense all i know is you put the ball in danny hawk's hands and he has the gas to turn it up 95 speed cruising right down the sideline it is going to be tough to stop this man and just one play right there we're down into the red zone this third and four will be a big one running a texas route right there he did not hold on we're a three and five team just getting indoctrinated to power conference football and the fbs so let's settle for three would like to stick in this one as long as we can boom strike there to ford down seven three let's not count ourselves out quite yet 
forward with another one. Stepping back, surveying the field. We got a chance for a one-on-one -on -one ball. I think he's toasted him. Oh, no. Third and 10. We need this conversion big. Agnew is going to snag it in. Don't let our guy get hot now. Going to throw a one-on-one -on -one ball to Ford. He came back for it. Topping off the drive with some points because it's a sure thing. There were a couple options on that last one. We did not drive over six hours, 400 plus miles from Eastern Washington's campus to Boise State to simply lose to the Broncos. It's neck and neck and we actually have the touchdown lead at the moment as defense sweats all over Mount Malachi. That was Des McHenry, our star linebacker. Now in the fourth quarter, we're going to need another heroic stop, and it's not going to come on that play. So the Eagles give up the score, and it's all tied up 17 apiece. No business really being in this one right now, but guys like Ford are doing all they can. This game is personal, proving which turf is the better turf. Hawk has a wide open turf. Touchdown, Huge play, we got the lead. Number 16, putting Bronco fans to sleep. This one is getting juicy. Malachi sustained an injury, backup throws a touchdown. With two minutes to go and all we need is a field goal, let's drive down this field methodically. Looking for the right balance of urgency, but also dump offs. Move the chains, pick up the first down, chew some clock, and keep things moving in the positive direction. So far, so good. This crowd is trying to get loud and the defense stepped it up. Fourth and two, just need a couple yards to go ahead and get the first there it is all we had to do was keep things alive and we were successful doing that and i can't say the same on that play third and 23 that seriously took us backwards and out of the range we were hoping to be in this slant at least sanchez fought for it fourth and 11 we probably should be punting but heck that is not the way over here at eastern washington going for it all instead no in and out his hands my guy seriously had it in his mitts but then dropped it. And that put us in a lot of trouble. Now it's 12 seconds left and that's a pick to end the game. Goodness gracious, we got baited and that's over. Swift end took us out. Boise State completes the comeback. Man, okay. Definitely gonna have to go and get redemption on these guys next year. Jumping ahead to the end of season number one, Davi Belfort from Virginia Tech won the Heisman. After we dropped our game against the Broncos, we beat the Aztecs by a touchdown before suffering a three point defeat to Arizona State and then a two touchdown defeat to Syracuse. At four and eight, we need to turn our eyes to the future and that's right here on the recruiting board with the 26th best class already you see that right nine four stars we need a fresh class of talent because in review here hawk not too great 20 touchdowns 2900 yards same said with nothing exciting on the ground game 67 overall tight end forward here was clearly wide receiver one 71 snags 890 yards i imagine that will kick his overall up a bit des mchenry did have six sacks but it just felt quiet on defense the only team that did worse in the pac 12 was san diego state both of us want to put the season behind us and if the Eastern Washington Eagles are going to become a national contender. It's time to get training and considering our options out of the portal. Before we can get to the transfer portal, we need to recognize we're going to lose a few guys too. I'll go ahead and try to keep a few young guys like Dominique Shahid and see if they're interested. So far, not looking good, but there we go. Eric Lopes. Diego Cesario is a better overall than the tight end that just popped off, so I don't really care if he doesn't stay. Doesn't hurt to try just because he's young and a high overall and it worked. Can the same be said about Cash McCollum? that's cash kind of wild we just pulled off that crazy streak so let's go ahead and take the five transfers that are at least interested in us a former kansas state dt san jose state left end oklahoma middle linebacker boise state middle linebacker and colorado state middle linebacker never hurts to take a look at the high school guys as well see if anyone's open for the five transfers you already know we're whining and dining them and mwah, a chef's dream we're cooking up something with sir sponge number one interest for all the transfer targets job well done getting seven of them here in just week two of the offseason recruiting national signing day we fell in the rank but it was still good enough to leapfrog boise state and be number one in the pac 12 comment down below what you think sir sponge is telling these recruits to make them commit to East Washington in the red turf over anyone else in the Pac-12. For two teams in the Mountain West, it was the end of their contract and the Pac-12 swooped up Colorado State and Utah State. Head to head against a lot of these teams, they're not gonna be at the top of the conference, but at least it rounds it back up to a 12. This was seriously a good batch of recruits and after training boost, we're up to an 83 overall. That's insane, the leap that we just took. Hayden Silverman, an impact guard. Rob Cole, impact receiver. Gerald Anthrop, 78 overall in impact. Let Mike Cook 
a star. Then there's Frank Sash with boost right now, up to 81 overall and a star as a true freshman. Can't forget about David on the other side of the line. Rounded it out with an elite defensive tackle, Devonte Sneed is on campus. A lot to be excited about as this team grows, including a redshirt freshman, Mike Vick's cousin, Tyler Vick, ready to back up. And then it looks like Christmas came early, another freshman getting the boost up to 82. Going through the depth chart, I couldn't forget about one of our first commits, Emmett Coe. All I can say is I hope we enjoyed last year's recruiting class because this one is brutal. One stars everywhere I look. That's it. Straight up, the only prospects in the recommended tab include three three stars. So give it up for the worst recommended class I've ever seen. Looks like we struck gold in last year's class and now we're off going rogue, finding anyone and everyone that we might be able to wine and dine. Never too soon to take a shot at the long shots, five-star prospects. Jumping into a Pac-12 conference game against the Beavers, let's see how our Eagles look in year two. On defense here to start off the game, it is Christmas and the boys. Textbook defense to start off the game there and now we're back on offense. The star is under our center and his name is Chocolatey. Sharp with the catch. Is he related to Sterling Sharp? As you can tell, we fell in our first game of the season, but it's good to be back on the red turf. Danny Hawk is improved, and he's got an improved cast around him, like Cesario here, who we convinced to stay. Cesario already stepped up, but maybe it's time for the other tight end, Ford, who had a big season last year. He shoulda, coulda, woulda. Believing in this team on 4th and 12. Call me crazy, but we got it. Sharp touchdown 7-7 seven, seven ball game before half let's go ahead and make something happen here what a catch by bear coffee who fumbled it and that's going oregon state's way the opposite of what we needed oregon state's got it here on third and goal what a contested touchdown losing by a score it's important we make the most of a third quarter here wide open receiver it's bear coffee again i don't want him to fumble it this time go ahead and put the touches on it here sharp call his name and he's gonna need to do it again here third and two down by a touchdown beavers cashed in and he did do it again sharp is breaking free down the sideline oh my goodness he is blossoming into a star number 11 quickly becoming my favorite target third and 11 i'm gonna step up and we got all field wide open touchdown danny ran it in like a phantom danny phantom touchdown all we gotta do is hold on to the lead simple enough right nice and easy here read option hitting it right hawks got some jets on him don't stop believe in it's sharp you know what they're thinking it's a run so that's exactly why i'm audibling into a vertical attack that is right sharp just blows right past him but the safety is coming back i got way too hyped i thought he was going to be catching it and out of there but the only one that's getting out of there is hawk right now haven't really spent much time reading up on the oregon state scouting report but i'm definitely encouraged with how our team is playing against them right now cesario he stayed at eastern washington and we reward him taking care of our guys at this program that is a key play and insurance needed beavers down to their final timeout if we get them to burn it this thing's over but who needs them to burn it when you got the burners touchdown i just want to take a second to recognize that this could have gone way way worse i'm glad that the showboat there did not come back to haunt us the ball gets knocked out but we're out at the one so let's just go ahead and hand it off lopes touchdown congrats to the eastern washington eagles 42 28 one heck of a game danny hawk seriously rushed for over 150 yards and then look at that threw for another 350 past our first home game with flying callers it wasn't much of a success on our first road game against louisiana tech most of these games on our calendar i see potential so let's keep an eye on it just like we're keeping an eye on the recruiting board carlos gee larry godwin and frankie Vejeo. We're in the lead right now, but there are teams hot in the running. Against the Pandas, it was a good opportunity for Joey Skaggs to showcase what he got. Three sacks. This is always a tough decision, but we're going to have to cut ties on Maka Fog. In addition, Frankie Vejo is going to visit us in week seven, but I think the Longhorns have this one unlocked. So that should give us 60 points back. Use the rest of the points to schedule visits and double down on the five stars. But as you can see here, there are some four stars just hanging around. So we went ahead and filled our board with some guys that weren't getting any offers yet. And it looks like our hard work has paid off. Larry Godwin out of Lawrence, Kansas 
Kansas. KU right in his backyard. He said, no, 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 I'm going to Eastern Washington. Mark it down, our first ever five-star. And this is an extremely timely signing because our veteran experience, Dez, the best defensive player we got is graduating this season. So we'll need a new left outside linebacker. Lee Toner might not have been interested us in the beginning, but his three interests align up with ours perfectly. Playing time, playing style, proximity to home, done and done. Continuing to build on what we started, Pierre Canty wants to be a part of it. And so does Lee Toner. Make sure you got some ink and toner in your printer because Lee is going to be printing interceptions all along the secondary. Unfortunately, we lost it on five two-star receivers. One of them committed to TCU. The only real positive is we can turn our attention to more four stars. It's a battle for the state of Washington, Cougars, Eagles in the season finale of year two. And I'll let you guess, it's good news for one Washington team and bad news for the other. That's right. Washington state had a unfortunate season, three and eight. And Eastern Washington, on the other hand, we have six wins, meaning bowl eligibility. And if we can pull off this one, that's seven. You already know there is no love loss between these two teams and Washington state blows early. You know what they say? When you take a blow, you just got to give one back, right? Someone said that somewhere. And that blow is right to our main man, Ford, down the sideline at the 20. At the 10, he's slowing down a bit, sheds a tackle, steps out. The big fella ran out of steam at the end of his run. Thankfully, though, he did more than enough as it's second and goal. Hawk steps it up and out of there touchdown this rivalry game is a fierce one but as it stands right now it's 2-0 eastern washington washington state down three quick punches let's make it a fourth jab while we're here lopes took his time with it come on now eagles soaring ever so high put some respect on our name after soaring through the fcs winning the big sky conference in 2026 we came to the fbs and we're starting to soar ever higher right now in the Pac-12. Like, how can you not be entertained by this brand of football? An electric dual threat quarterback has ushered him into this FBS era. And I have a feeling he's gonna leave this team in good hands before his job is done at Eastern Washington. All day, baby, touchdown 16. What more is there really to see in this one? Fourth and two, stuffed up, fans have left. They hit the exit long ago, and those that are still here, I'm not sure why they're surprised. They can see the defeat coming a mile away. Our heroic efforts have led us right to the guaranteed rate bowl where we get a matchup with the cowpokes. Early signing day on the other hand, not looking too great for us, 64th in the nation. The only feather in our cap is two five stars. No one else in the Pac-12 has got that. As in the name guaranteed rate bowl, Sir Sponge guarantees his player if we don't have any opt-outs, we got this. Dancing in the playoffs, the Eagles first taste of a bowl game. Got our sights set on a bigger dance later in this rebuild but for now we'll go ahead and soak up the rain soak it up like a sponge and bring on the oklahoma state cowboys the start has been unconventional to say the least we're down five to zero such an odd score but no worries here on third and goal i think we can go ahead and score six points just got to find the open receiver there he is it's the tight end forward he's had a knack for doing that i like the senior the big man stepped up in a big way last year from 67 overall to the low 80s sir sponge has got his team moving in the guaranteed rate bowl and he's looking for more a young cast of receivers led by guys like this barakavi i'm gonna let him go and make a play yes sir get mossed head tops only i think this team can be exciting here just give them a few years to cook just like this barakavi again we find him. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Number four, big man, special head top, just like we said. The defense did break, though, before half, giving up a couple scores. Now we're forced to go ahead and go for the win in the fourth quarter. Look at all that pressure escaping his hawk. This is exactly why our team needs a scrambling quarterback. If I don't got one of these in the wings, I need to go ahead and recruit one. I don't know what I'm going to do once hawk goes and graduates. With a flag on the play, I'm not sure if this interception is going to stand. That's right. Pass interference. I could tell all day long. Let the good drive continue here. Lobbing a ball up to Ford in the back of the end zone. I wanted the big man to get it. I feel like that was a bit unnecessary, forcing it to our tight end like that. And now we're looking at a fourth and goal. Anyone want to get free? Let's just take it ourselves. Corner touchdown hawk all the eastern washington fans erupting this is the game in these next couple drives all the difference right here 
out of bounds. Fourth and 12. Now it's really it on the line. Going for a big one. No, sir. Turban interception and the Eagles look like they're on their way. All that happens left is chewing clock. On second and 11, there's only three defenders on the defensive line. So of course I'm running the rock. What are they thinking? The last thing they wanted giving up a first down just happened. So they're gonna need to revisit the playbook next season. Cause in just a play or two here, this season belongs to the Eastern Washington Eagles. How about that? Guaranteed rate bull victory. That final kneel down is gonna seal it a victory in our first ever bowl game i think eastern washington's quickly on the ascent i haven't played every single game but even the ones i'm jumping in the team just feels good heisman difficulty starting to feel less like heisman difficulty our offensive coordinator just got swooped up in the carousel so cortez tant is a recruiter we'll go ahead and bring him in hopefully the interview goes well because he's also looking at vandy jmu and central michigan so the interview didn't go well but there are some new guys like david morales from bowling green f prestige but he's an elite recruiter meaning he might suck at calling plays but he can sure bring a dude in and we got him hats off to the number one seed boise state out of the pac-12 made themselves a run for the natty but they lost to usc who ended up taking it all i think our team in general had a much better season improvement across the board and dalvin sharp oh my goodness expect a big upgrade from him and expect a big send off to defensive captain des mchenry i wish him luck and maybe someone will take a chance in the nfl prestige plus one star two players trying to leave let's go ahead and persuade them why not hawker agreed now there's a very low chance hickson will agree yeah he did not looks like des did not catch it and i mean catch an nfl team that wanted to draft him that's a bummer and we will sure miss him but you know what else is a bummer the transfer portal not a single player out here wants to consider Eastern Washington. We've done a few dynasty rebuilds now, and this is another first where I haven't seen a single prospect, not even one, have us at their 10th interest slot. So I guess my tactic is to look for high schoolers and go through the process with them. Transfers locking us out didn't stop us from nabbing seven high school three stars in the last week. Someone on this list has to be our next game changer. Despite a lower quantity than most Pac-12 schools, it was good enough to catapult us right to the top. 26th in the nation, two five stars, three four stars, 14 three stars. Going into year three after training up to an 86 overall, it feels like we're on the fast track. Preseason first team, all Pac-12. 12 joey skaggs cracks the list and that's it so despite the teams overall there are still a lack of star players emmett coat one of our first pickups last season is up to an 88 overall his sophomore year at this rate dude's head is straight for the nfl a look at a few of our freshmen from this year's class gash impact pierre canty 76 overall impact as well larry godwin our first ever five star from kansas is a star he will fill in nicely for des just like lee toner will fill in just as well in the secondary a couple exciting receivers to add to your watch list like Kevin McCrary. If it's stars you seek, look no further than the board. This is actually a better pickings this time. Must have been the guaranteed rate bowl victory increasing our appeal. Sure is proven results, guaranteed. With guys like Danny Hawk graduating, we need guys like Danny Grimm to keep things grim on the defensive side of the ball because we all know the offense is gonna take a little bit of time to adjust. Bumped up to an 87 overall, it's game time opening week here in year three three of the Eastern Washington rebuild. This team is progressing fast. It's gotta be something to do with Sir Sponge and his coaching expertise. Looking like a young Nick Saban out here and it sure as heck does not hurt when you have a quarterback like Danny Hawk in his senior season, ready to ball out. Who knows, Dark Horse Heisman. The unfortunate reality is after our guy departs, graduates, goes to the NFL, whatever he does, we have not many options behind him we got vic's cousin but he hasn't been hitting the gym or taking football too seriously right now which is a shame unless i see major progression from him this year that door is beginning to close unfortunately for everyone and most unfortunately for this team. With a packed stadium, everyone out here supporting the Eagles, we unfortunately turn it over, giving Washington State this opportunity to cash in on fourth down. A little underneath here, Cesario was open, and he's been a happier camper these last couple seasons, and wow, I can't believe we just avoided that insane pressure and got it off to Sanchez. Wait a minute, I kid you not, he dropped it somehow. Mahet, 
made up for it though. What a clutch catch there on fourth down. As we can get our new receiver McCrary involved early in this one, the freshman could not hang in there. As each minute ticks by Washington State is actually closer to pulling this one off which is not what the home fans want to see. What they want to see is touchdowns just like this to Cole. Young guys stepping up. And let's keep the party rocking in this one. And number 19, burnt right past the DB touchdown. The mission is simple, defend our home turf and come out on top. Not a time to hit panic because everyone's got their timeouts and we can just work it. In fact, there goes the two minute warning and on fourth and six, we're gonna have to go for it right here. Game on the line. We have an open receiver, so let's just take it. The easy route and wait 80 is still going juke moving all past the 50 and that's how you do it by the book moving down this field and number four barakavi heck i'm confident so i'm gonna start chewing the clock i don't think washington state's gonna take any of their timeouts we could cash in but i'm gonna purposely go down it's second and goal Let's see, running back's gonna slip open and we hit him, Pacheco, touchdown. That's gonna give us the lead with 14 seconds left. Fans going crazy. Talked about Mike Vick's cousin on the bench. Well, Kevin Pacheco, Isaiah Pacheco's younger little bro, cashed in in a big way. Now the defense just has one job in one job only. Hold them, do not give up the miracle play. And I like that swarm right there. Five seconds left. This is it. Final play of the game. He got hit while throwing it. He is going to catch it. And he's running. He's almost breaking it off. Talk about a way to scare me. But it falls. And then they're hyped, I guess. Uh, career passing yards for Tompkins. Congratulations and all. But you guys just lost the game. So celebrate while you can. Because peep that scoreboard. 34-30. Sir Sponge has been laying a pipeline in Texas and straight out of Plano, we got Monty Meekins, five-star quarterback, number one option in the nation. I'm sorry, I was off. Best player in Texas, second best quarterback in the nation, fourth best player in all of America. I think we know who we're turning to once Hawk leaves. 92 throw power, 82 speed, great accuracies, yes please. Thankfully freed up with points now to go ahead and schedule more visits for our top prospects. When it comes to five stars and you're a smaller school, I think you need to get that visit ASAP. So far so good, I feel like this is lining up to be a good class. Just borrowed some points from Danny Grimm since we have the lead in fog, we're starting to fall. So I could give him a visit and hopefully get there in the nick of time. Teamwork makes the dream work just like Alfonso Fiedler is going to be the next teammate to set our secondary straight. Now that we were able to land plenty of more commits, I refilled the board with some four stars and Diego Madden. We got the Madden last name out here, but let's hold on Madden and turn our attention to Jose Shipman. Brought in the five star left outside. Now let's bring in the five star right outside. About the halfway mark, we are now ranked 25th in the nation. We got that win as you saw against Washington State took care of an FCS opponent, kept things rolling against Western Michigan, Utah State, New Mexico State, before losing by four to Colorado State. Chalk that up as something I didn't expect to happen. And here's another fun twist. Stanford is number two in the nation. I think you know what that means. On the red turf, I had to come and see what the hype was with the Stanford Cardinal. This is pretty interesting. Stanford also has to deal with the red turf advantage and we're off on a slinging start. This team has been cruising all year long and we don't plan on slowing down. Cesario taking this thing into the red zone. Really hope Stanford brought their A game. They're gonna need it. This looks tight. I can't believe we just swerved out of that. Are you serious? How did we avoid the sack and turn that to six? Someone explain to me why Danny Hawk is this good. My man started out in the 70 overall range and has turned it up. In his final season, only an 85, which is like normal for an average to good quarterback developing over four years. Yet he plays so much better. Third and eight here. Wow, right over the linebacker's head for a touchdown. Stanford strikes back. Needing points to hang in this one. Let's go ahead and get it with Cole. All right, we took our shot. So let's go ahead and go conservative now. Right across the middle. That worked out to perfection. With two minutes to go, no one told us to stop cooking. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's go back to the tight end. That man at the tight end position has seriously become a security blanket for Danny Hawk and this Eastern Washington team. He is something else out there. I can tell you that as we go to Lopes on the slip screen, cuts it right. He's got some room to work faking out phantom and danny the ghost red zone right here that's what it's all about gonna send our guy on a corner route the security blanket 
way too good. It's his senior season after all. He's got to show up. Sir Sponge, proud of his guys going into halftime. Can't say much now about the second half. Stanford has stepped it up. Down three touchdowns, even though the guys are hot. This is all she wrote out here. Fourth in 15, there's no chance. The biggest difference I see, we've been sacked seven times and on defense, zero sacks accumulated. So we're under heavy duress all day long. I came in here with some fighting words and you know what? I walk away a Stanford believer. I understand the hype, but I also understand the hype of the Eagles. I don't think there is a single question out there about the ascent this team is taking. Barakavi breaks the tackle and you know what? He is gone touchdown giving up another score to stanford one of the pain points here is defense and we're addressing that so far in the recruiting panel uh oh add another sack that's nine i wish i could say i was joking but seriously hawk has been able to do all of this under extreme pressure letting one final one rip for the one time why the heck not full send to number 19 sanchez burns 16 stay out of the kitchen but that's all the smack i could talk against the cardinal they beat us 54 to 44 good game all around or i should say good game for the fans not good game for our defense after the loss to stanford we pulled off a couple close ones ucla boise state Fresno State and Cal dropped one here in the middle to Arizona State. It's crazy that at nine and three, we didn't qualify for the championship game. It looks like it was Stanford versus Oregon State. Someone tell me what is going on with San Diego State. One and 11, this team seriously needs a rebuild. Taking a look at 2029 award winners for the player of the year award. Danny Hawk was right there, number four. And oh man, even so close to best quarterback, number two right behind Kevin Cano. He does look in line to win the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award, which is presented to the best senior quarterback. And I do think he is deserving 3,900 yards, 42 touchdown passes, 12 ints, while adding eight more scores on the ground. Absolutely insane freshman season for Lee Toner, five interceptions holding down the safety spot. Lee Toner, meet Lee Stitzer, your new friend in the secondary. Much needed ground support and Hugo Diaz has arrived. Now that I look at the numbers here, Kevin Cano winning Heisman is crazy 39 touchdowns two ints i get that's a super good ratio and we had 10 more interceptions but honestly i expect just a little more from a heisman winner we will happily take the johnny unitas golden arm award and walk away with something to put in the trophy room after a nine win season we got the invite to the birmingham bowl against smu and unfortunately for our seniors like hawk it's going to end in heartbreaking fashion 26 24 smu looks like your 2029 champs are the texas longhorns absolutely love the name here cassie is Cone interested in joining the cause? Same with Cliff Irwin from Boise State. A couple four-star dudes. They should be immediate game changers. Extremely successful campaign. The ninth best class in all the nation. We got the transfers we wanted too. If we're just sorting it by the nation's rank here, we got Meekins, Shipman, Cone, Irwin, and Fielder. Not to mention the best tight end in the class coming in as a four-star, Tyrone Morton. I think we got some dogs. Up to an 88 overall already. This is going to be a dangerous team this upcoming season the best part here is clearly just take a look at the list you're not a senior in sight until you get down to the receiver but a ton of young dudes leading the team starting off pretty slow here with a couple bye weeks and then we jump right into non-conference and then all the way through Pac-12. It's back to back, 12 straight weeks. Eastern Washington is cracked. You got sophomore and junior players crack in the 90s. Cliff Irwin, our transfer quarterback, we brought in with boost, 86 overall. We thought our last guy, Danny Hawk, was something special with his legs. 96 speed, 99 change of direction, to go with 94 throw power in 90 accuracies. Tell me you're a star without telling me you're a star. And then obviously Monty Meekins, the five-star quarterback we just hauled in, elite dev trait, just waiting his turn. Our transfer quarterback's gonna be connecting a lot with our transfer receiver, Cassius Cohn. You already know Shipman's gonna be different when he gets his turn on the field. And then I'll keep it brief, but give it up for Alfonso Fielder. He's gonna be the third cornerback in the depth chart starting day one. No preseason All-Americans yet, but finally getting some representation 
representation on the all pack 12 team Hayden Silverman and Devonta Sneed represent sophomore linebacker Larry Goodwin got a second team nod and a pair of seniors Kevin Pacheco and Daryl Mahat got on the list too this upcoming season is gonna be a movie but even more so I think year five is usually the target date we can make a run for the natty I can already tell the quality of recruit Eastern Washington is bringing in has gone off the charts locked out from the number one recruit in all the nation angel battle looks like a really good one in a neat name to go with it but we do have access to two three four five six seven and eight i'll just target a couple needs to round out the list this crop of recruits wink wink cuna kings is the stuff of legend leon svatek and oscar manx are two five-star gem prospects that absolutely blow the reports out the water especially leon here 94 speed 90 excel 94 change of direction 78 man this dude's a high school player no we got locked out from oscar but we're still in it with leon so it's time to give him all we got four-star gem receiver lamar caraway looks really good too 92 speed 90 96 jump, 90 acceleration, 89 spec catch out of Waco, Texas. Another high schooler? Our dude here is built to go to the NFL in just one to two years. Donovan, what's McCracken? Cash in, cash out with Oscar. And then say hello to my little friend, Junior Prince. But wait, we're back in this thing. I don't know how long we'll have with Oscar. I'll send him the house this one week and hope it works. Not only did we get back in it with Oscar, we're here in a major way. Back to number one with a visit right here on deck. We win, he's in. Bada bing, bada boom. That was a quick moving five star. And here we are cruising through the season, getting some big name commits. A couple four-star gems. Ranked 12th in the nation. Let's go pay our friends in Boise a little visit. More than ready to see what QB transfer Cliff Irwin's all about. He's doing a great job steering the team this far. So let's go see and feel that 96 speed. Eagles, Broncos, we got a great opportunity here on defense to make a stop and also see what coat our big first prospect back in the day make a stop good to see true freshman jose shipman already get some in-game action out here you're number one and there he is cliff Irwin on the blue field the greatest show on earth that's what they all say right 96 speed 99 change direction touchdown eastern washington has a knack for bringing in these mobile guys definitely here for this and oh my goodness i am here for a valenzuela pick six do you believe I just started showboating? He still got it though. This team feels good, looks good, plays good. Trying to get the stadium pulse up, but I don't think it matters in this one. I see Cassius Cone right over the middle. Oh man, I, I was smiling there. I thought he was open. Number nine just flew down into coverage. No worries here because we'll have plenty more opportunities to hit up Cassius Cone as he catches and runs. Our team is coming alive. Gonna dump it on the run to sanchez dude these guys are good that throw by cliff Irwin was not easy by any means just looking for something here it's the security blanket cesario he did it for danny hawk he'll do it for cliff Irwin. he has been the benefactor of two really really good quarterbacks the pac-12 has been put on notice as eastern washington is out for blood every single game this year do not sleep on him in a malachi nelson ashton genty list boise state offense they choose to punt the ball away and wave the white flag as we are under two minutes in the fourth quarter textbook football on both sides we're just gonna go ahead and top it off with cassius cone action just because we feel like exposing boise state a little bit more okay okay just one more time in the red zone i promise then we'll go back our merry way to eastern washington let's see if pacheco can run a little bit like his big bro angry style i wouldn't call 20 carries for 66 yards angry brand of football so that's gonna have to improve going into the later part of the season all said and done here 49 17 midway through another four and five star i'm feeling pretty good how about sir sponge having faith in cassius cone bringing him into this program turning it on its head 279 yards five touchdown catches obviously that's also good enough for national player of the week the best part is the 16th ranked eagles keep cruising minus one bloop or blunder to cow we got payback on stanford 49 14 cliff Irwin threw him off a cliff six touchdown passes when the regular season was all said and done 10 and 2 in a pac-12 championship berth the most insane part about this championship game is arizona state went six and six this year we will give them credit for a five and two conference slate but taking on a 10 win eastern washington team i'm sorry man the forks are gonna be down today a little closer in this one than anticipated but nonetheless we have a chance here to win it thankfully the big man 
recovered that fumble. We were just about ready to kiss our chance of sealing this one out goodbye, but it's okay now. Look at the security blanket. You already know. Survey says we should probably be running the ball to ice this one out, but we're going to stay aggressive and get some extra points while we're here. A lot of stars feel the field like Cone all the way touchdown respectfully when i saw the six and six matchup i did not question what we would come out and do today cone is just having an encore so we're in our way out of here with the pac-12 championship trophy 40 to 18 arizona state had no chance and there it is the pac-12 trophy now defunct in real life but in this instance eastern washington is restoring the Pac-12 greatness. Our big time performance in the Pac-12 championship game got us a berth here with the Florida Gators in the first round. If we can survive the swamp, we'll be in a matchup against Toledo in the quarterfinals. But this one is a tough one. Number two seed, Florida Gators. One of the toughest places to play is the swamp, but we would come out swinging. All the guns are out right now, and we're up 21-7 here with two minutes to go before halftime. If Florida is not careful, this very well could get out of hand and fast. The Gators picked a very, and I mean very bad day, not to come out and play. That safety will help. Maybe they'll get some momentum back on their side. Yep, exactly. That seemed to be the spark they needed. Back in it here. Cone will go ahead and get us up a little more. All the way down into the red zone. It's a fake handoff play action here. Quarterback steps up in fights really hard fourth and inches without a doubt fourth and inches this play call makes sense gonna go for it and we're gonna see if we can stop them not in the cards down by eight we need to see if a comeback is now in the cards because we're all of a sudden losing a game i thought we were up on this place is rocking florida fans are getting right down our back but there is a big strike to silence the crowd it's guess who number 81 the right man for the job and here is another big play this time it's sanchez streaking down the field making quick work of the opportunity at hand here in so much trouble on these last couple plays it's fourth and seven it all comes down to an all go here gonna step up to our left maybe take a second to dial in in that interception yeah we really didn't have any other option after defense gets us back on the field we now have a chance to win it that's right it looks like against all odds we are back and better than ever out here right now in a beautiful lob time pass exactly we got down here pretty quick that is the only caveat i would say but that was a cone job on the last one and a cone job for a touchdown we're gonna get the lead out of timeouts they have one more to go and burnt us talk about theatrics in this one we're down by five with 20 seconds left no timeouts what can we do well for starters our tight end is free and breaking down the field. So, of course, naturally, like we do, we're going to hurry up to the line and call that same play all out of timeouts. We need to hit something big here. And, yo, that pressure and deflection off our arm is going to seal the game. This close, and I mean this close for making a run, honestly got exposed in the secondary back there which led to a loss and we would have been playing Toledo. So the matchup could have been favorable for us. Instead, Florida's got a good shot at going the distance. End of the season, a couple NFL draft picks to top off the year. Our fifth year in target year for a playoff run. Let's hope this team is the team to make it happen. I see a lot of 90s over here and mostly upperclassmen, but still a very good mix of underclassmen in there too. Bad news on the DB front, Emmanuel Valenzuela, our number one corner broke his femur. Out for another 29 weeks, there's no shot he returns. So we're gonna have to welcome Purdue to the greatest show on earth, the Red Turf, without him. A packed house, it's a sold out crowd. Everyone is here for the show. We have a lot of good players ready to play today. And one of them, Sir Sponge, is calling out to the field for the first time. It's not Tyler Vick, despite the panel. It's freshman Monty Meekins making his start and first claim at the job. Monty Meekins was a hot target, well sought out by a lot of teams when it came recruiting time, and he is ready to play today. Nothing like getting thrusted into an offense with stars all over this field, as you can tell. A late decision to throw in the last one. We'll go for it here on fourth down. Hit Cone across 
across the middle, that'll be a big connection. The craziest part is by ratings, Cone is the third best receiver on this team. Mackie and McCrary, just a couple guys to call out there. Going to be important targets for our dude. And Cone, though, is his favorite. Actually got lucky on that last one. There was some confusion there in the secondary of who was going to cover who. On his first drive, he's doing pretty good. He's hitting the target where he needs to go, and it's Cone. I guess you can't go wrong with Cone every single play, but how about a Maracovi, Barakovi, however you pronounce his last name, strike for his first ever touchdown in collegiate football. On defense, we have stars across the board as well. It is a lean, mean machine, and that is the only weakness, the secondary. We lost our number one DB, and we could have used him there. Really gonna need to trust the young guys to step it up in due time, just like the young quarterback stepping up here in the pocket. He found Cole in the last one, and I'm telling you right now, he has no shortage of good options. How about the true freshman tight end? Freshman to freshman, that could be a lethal connection. McCrary, though, cashes in. McCrary was the story of the offseason for me. Sophomore receiver went up like 10, 12 points. He really took the training seriously, hit the gym as hard as he could, and got ready for the season. Absolutely love the dedication and need to reward that whenever I get a chance. In this case, though, I'm always gonna be looking for Cone. I guarantee you McCray is gonna get his, but the Cone show is alive and well. Third and eight, we're gonna dump it off to DeBeer. That's right, DeBeer cuts back and keeps on pushing. Technically fourth and inches, but that never stopped no one. There's DeBeer again, shrugging it off, spinning it around, touchdown. With all the options on offense, we should be running up the score all fall. And now on defense, it's a big key fourth down. The unit here is actually stronger than the offense, which is hard for me to fathom given how talented the offense actually is. If Cone gets open, we'll be happy to throw a snow cone to him, but I think a one-on-one -on -one ball here with McCrary was the right decision, to be honest. It didn't work out in the end, but it's the type of ball you wanna trust your receiver to go and get it. Defense went and let the team back in the game, so we're gonna need to go on offense and get it done. Crucial third and eight, but also a crucial streak down the sideline. Brings up an absolutely crucial 46-yard field goal. I think we should get it, but it's wide right. Not gonna lie, that's actually ridiculous that we sold the kick there. So the quarterback's gonna choose to step up himself, wait all day, throw it away. Fourth and seven, this is it. Everything on the line. He's sending a four vertical pretty much down the field. Defense did it though. Big stop, holds the scare from Purdue on the red turf. You're not gonna beat us at home. Kicking it into gear, let's continue to build off this against the Pandas. Yeah, you know what? That sounds good to me. Let's build on it with 183 yards and four touchdowns from Cone. Even at the halfway point, the man does not seem like he's cooling down. In fact, we've enjoyed decisive victories against Arizona State, New Mexico State, and then Oregon State. Somehow, some way, Colorado State has had our number the last couple seasons, but then we took it out on Boise State and Washington State to make things better. Ranked sixth in the nation, four games remain, two of them against ranked opposition. As the bracket stands right now, we're slotted in at the number two seed. Sure, a lot can happen over the next four weeks, but it starts by securing it one game at a time. And there we go with a 10 spot in the fourth quarter, 31-20 victory. Totally just realized that Michael Vick's younger cousin, Tyler Vick, has been starting for our team. So you know what? While the senior is winning, I might as well let him run with it. That is until he shows me otherwise, but he's clearly not showing any signs of letting up when he's got big receivers like Cassius making plays for him. Good enough for national honors as well. If we look at the Heisman watch, it's no surprise to see our guy right now at number one. One last encore to finish off the regular season. I just can't. We seriously found ourselves a superstar in the transfer portal. Whoever let Cohen walk in the portal, man, is a sick, sick man. Meekins had his highlight moment in debut in week one, but it's been all Vic since then. 42 touchdown passes, 75% completion. Absolute video game numbers here from Cassius. 1,322 touchdown snags. Defense also peaking at the right time headed into the playoffs, Sneed and Anthrop, two solid defensive linemen. In the Pac-12 championship game, Tyler Vick showed why we can trust in him, the senior, to lead us forward. 440 passing yards and four touchdowns. He was the right man to get Cassius Cone the rock this season for player of the year. And naturally so, slap that man the Heisman Trophy. While we're here, give Gerald best defensive end award. And if you had any question, of course, best receiver. I assumed when Vick got player of the week, that meant we won the Pac-12 championship 
championship game wrong. Despite the performance, we lost by two. Stanford will most definitely celebrate that one because look at what it did. It got them the four seed in the bracket. That should have been us. Regardless, this is the destined path against Auburn in the first round at their place. Truthfully, I actually think this was a good thing to get humbled right before the big dance so we can get that hunger again for winning. Down by a couple scores, that is not gonna fly. Can't get over the fact that this offensive line is getting demolished by the pressure. Desperate times already calling for desperate measures. Thankfully, McCrary is here to redeem us. Seriously, just needed to get a connection under our belt here. It's been a dry streak of late. I'm gonna go ahead and see if the Heisman winner can step up and make a play, and he does. 14 seconds, third down. This is huge. Gonna go out to the halfback angle. Mackey has got it. Down within one, right before half. Fourth and inches, fourth quarter all on the line here. Mackey's gonna take it and run. Not exactly wowed by Tyler Vick, but this is a really hard place to play, an extremely good defense, so I'm definitely not gonna hold this against him. The defense has kept us in this game all along, and now we have a drive to make things happen. What a recovery. McCrary's life flashed right before his eyes. I'm not gonna kid you here. Thankfully, I know he'll make it up for us as the senior finds him wide open, free, touchdown we got the lead let's go now desperation mode for auburn fourth down they're going for it make a play or just whiff well that was rather unfortunate and quick right there by auburn i wonder if auburn's defense learned a lesson and they won't be napping on this play big third down just right underneath yep that's the sure play one minute to go ahead and work it to the sideline it's cone heisman just need a field goal to tie it up but that is by far not what our game plan is we're looking to win and oh my goodness you couldn't finish the slide Vic you're not kind of like your big cousin there the lefty slinger that could definitely run around the defense you're gonna have to be more careful if we're gonna make it out alive here Mackie thank you sir tick tock on the clock pressure sack getting one heck of a game here in the first round I think we hit him it's Bear Covey huge let's go man that was massive and you know what else is massive stepping up here with vic running and thankfully not fumbling seems like the right time to call red zone scissors and uh yeah we're in the red zone so when else would you call it no way no way he caught it no way i just froze because he was getting sacked let it rip nine seconds left we got it we got it Eastern Washington. That one was for you. So beautiful. A grown man can cry off of that play alone. And we're one play away. They have to get the touchdown. A field goal will not do. Time has expired. So just throw it away. And that's ball game. Auburn falls at home by a miraculous Eastern Washington comeback. That is what I'm talking about, Vic. Deservingly gets player of the game. First Heisman winner in Dynasty for King Sponge, check. First playoff game win for Eastern Washington, check. A look around the bracket, we're taking on TCU. Should be another great game. But Georgia, Texas, that seems like a tried and true. Wisconsin, Stanford, that's an interesting and fun matchup. And then you got Nebraska versus Oregon. Here come the frogs. And the site is the Sugar Bowl. We're back in white. No problem here. We're ready to soar. Down 10-0. It's been a defensive battle so far in this one but if you're gonna leave Cole wide open I'm gonna get my points make it 10-7 now before the end of the first half the field goal units already let us down once in this game it's fourth and three heck yeah we're going for it and we're just gonna take it underneath in the face of pressure there McCrary great move way to work blood sweat and tears in this one handoff to Mackey he's been a big piece third and three last play of the third what in the world was that blown route like I think he smushed into the DB into the own receiver and that didn't work out all I could ask for was a second chance and thankfully we got it and we're gonna kick it into gear second and long just gonna drop it to McCrary that's some good yardage all we need here is just one yard but why not go to the Heisman winner it's cone zone touchdown Gives us the lead in the fourth quarter. No one else but the man, the receiver, the best player in the nation. Need a huge stop here on defense. Third and 13. Defense swarmed all over him. It was Devontae Sneed, his third sack of the day. That literally forces them to go for it on fourth and 25. And I swear, if somehow, some way, this thing gets blown up. I'm going to be one salty man, but it doesn't because it was another sack on the play. TCU turns it over and that should be game. Before I can say that, I got one final mission, burn the timeouts, get one first down. And heck, they're pressing up on our receivers, so I might as well try and get more if we can 
find it. I really just threw a pick six right now on the zig. I didn't think he was cutting in. I thought he was on man coverage. So yeah, read that wrong and now we're losing. What should have been a quieter way to go out in this game. We have to earn it now. I guess we just like the thrill of victory so much that we want to make it harder. Something like that, I, I, I guess you could say. At least Cone's there. Bright side is we got all the way back down here in just a few plays, clearly in field goal range, but now nah, we can go ahead and go the distance. Truthfully, not ideal because now look, it's third and eight and they have a lot of opportunities to try to get it into the touchdown zone. Instead of getting our free pass and grinding out the clock, we're fighting to the very last second and we defend. We stood the test, just getting more battle hardened for the future rounds to come. And then there were four Nebraska versus Wisconsin, Eastern Washington versus Georgia. Winner of the Fiesta Bowl goes on to the big game. And you can definitely never count out the Georgia Bulldogs. I don't care if they were whatever 16th in the nation or, or whatever it said. Those guys are tough year in, year out. Which is why it was so important we got points first because we'll need all the cushion we can get before we can officially close this one out. Little PI on the play never hurts. Vic drives his team right down here again. Got swallowed up, but really it was just so he can go back and make the field goal a whole lot more interesting even though it was cash money. Surprisingly, this one's really never been in any question. I think the team is performing very well and efficient. Not just on offense, but we're stifling them on defense as well. And that's right of course the Heisman winner hauled that one in kept possession of it and finishes it off for a touchdown Georgia showing effort to come back in this one but I think it's too late here is the cone zone for the dagger what team's gonna sign him where is he going let me know in the comment sections which NFL team needs him the most it's seriously a great feeling not having to sweat at all for the championship game and on fourth and five this could be it deflected ball drops to the ground put your hands together for the fiesta bowl champions and incoming national championship game eagles they told me they were gonna soar this year and they're really living up to it nebraska was defeated 38 to 20 so it all comes down to this wisconsin versus eastern washington evenly matched on paper the battle for the trophy should be a really fun one wisconsin badgers a team that has finally made it to the promised land but unfortunately in the 2032 game it's gonna have to go towards the pac 12 in the eagles i'm sorry to do it to y'all our team is built for this we're ready to soar and honestly we're built to do it again and again this team is a powerhouse sir sponge in his rise with this team needs to be studied three years in the fcs to get the big sky and then five years later who expected this team to be on the national championship stage that is absurd turnaround ability let alone vic himself is a quarterback story only a three-star just sat in the wings forever he stuck with eastern washington when hawk was here and he stuck through it when we brought in a transfer quarterback that cooked it up. So seriously, no one is more deserving than he is. And I just hope that we can have the game as a team that I know we can have. If all cylinders are firing, this is gonna be a nightmare for Wisconsin's defense. And let's start off the party here with a slant to Cone out of reach, intercepted. Okay, that's not exactly the party I had in mind. We just get a little too excited in the big games. So let me take a deep breather and just look for the open man, just like Blorkowski. I think I'm mispronouncing this man worse and worse as the video goes on. I might've had it more accurate in the beginning. Gonna hand it off to Cone on the jet touch. He has the angle touchdown let's go baby once you get one you know more is to come back of the end zone oof he would have had that Vic just a little inaccurate on the touch no problemo back to Morton this should get us right back to the seven point lead I swear we just like to make things interesting out here anyways McCrary there he is the sophomore stepping into some big shoes if this dynasty goes on for two more years that man's winning a Heisman too a touchdown here feels like a huge difference in this game and there it is Morton Vic how do you do rock him to sleep fourth and one in the fourth quarter up the middle that is close he did get it and they got it in a big way just down within eight here we go let's just go ahead and hand it off to our running back Mackie the badger dancing like he still has a chance third and four maybe I switch it up to a mesh because everyone thinks a run is coming and it's not surprise first down via the air. Well, you can dance your way into next season because for me and the Eastern Washington Eagles, we had an amazing run full of thrillers and we'll cap it off with a win here over the Wisconsin Badgers National 
champs. Let's go. God is staying to get to this point and drop the big game. In a one possession game too. It's not like it was decisive till the end. Sir Sponge has successfully taken another team, this case an FCS team on the brink of destruction, taking them around to a Big Sky Championship into the FBS, resurrecting the Pac-12, and winning it all in five years. So you just witnessed a lot of jam-packed fun stuff. And let me tell you, if you like jam-packed fun stuff, keep soaking it up with your boy King Sponge. Hit the subscribe button, drop a like, leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. And of course, just like Eastern Washington holding up the national championship trophy, I wanna hear who you wanna see next in the Dynasty Rebuild series. For closure, these players got drafted into the NFL, and I just wanna say, Cassius, fourth round pick, massively slept on receiver, huge steal, GG, and good riddance to the rest of the league when this guy torches your team.